I've been using Rome Research for about a year now, and within that year, I managed to grow my YouTube channel from 3 subscribers to 13,000 subscribers. And of course, there were many factors that influenced the growth of my channel, but I think one of the most important factors is having a solid content management system. It allows you to capture ideas, organize them, and then turn them into videos and articles efficiently. Many creators use tools like Notion for content management, but personally, I don't use Notion so often. Instead, I do pretty much most of my writing and the creative process inside Rome Research, which in my opinion feels more suited for creating content. Rome's UI is not as pretty as Notion's UI, but this simplicity is exactly why I love Rome Research. It allows you to focus more on creating and thinking rather than you know organizing stuff or building a structure but this is completely up to your preference anyway in this video i want to show you my creative process of how i capture ideas organize them and then turn them into videos and articles if you're a creator like youtuber or writer who just started using rome research you might find this video helpful so let's just dive in okay First of all, you have to capture your ideas for articles and videos. In my experience, you often come up with new ideas all of a sudden. So I always have my daily note open in the sidebar so I can quickly jot down ideas. Alternatively, you can use the daily note pop-up window which is included in this plugin called Rome42. It's an incredible plugin so you should try it out if you haven't yet. I use this tag called video ideas so I can see the list of my ideas later. So usually I do my work in the main panel like writing a new article or video script or taking notes from books. Then when I get new thoughts I open the sidebar or the pop-up window to write them down and add some relevant tags. This way you don't lose your precious ideas. Now every Sunday I start planning a new video for the week. The planning process begins from the video ideas page, which is a tag I used when I was capturing ideas. In this page, I have a super simple Kanban board where you have three columns, idea, in progress, and done. The items in the idea column are potential videos for the future. Then the ones in the uh, progress column are the videos I'm currently working on or want to publish this month. Finally, the done column contains videos I already published. And if you go to the bottom of the page, you see the list of every video idea you had. So you can see the ideas I just added as well. I usually drag these ideas to the idea column so they show up in the Kanban board. Then I take some time to think about which ideas I want to make. When you're picking an idea for videos, I think it's important to ask yourself, is this going to resonate with my audience? Or is this relevant to my niche? Because if not, people are not going to watch your videos or read your stuff. Anyway, I could talk about niche for hours and hours, so that is for another video. If you want to know more, I have a few sketches and notes about finding your niche and using it to grow your channel and blog. Another question to ask is, is this content evergreen? In other words, is this video going to be still relevant in 5 years or 10 years time? The more evergreen your content, the more views and subscribers you get over time. So for example, video or article about the benefits of journaling is evergreen. It's going to be still relevant in many many years. But a video about best things I bought in 2020 is going to be irrelevant quickly. So ideally you want to make many evergreen content, but that's very difficult. So perhaps we should aim for 50% evergreen and 50% non-evergreen content. Anyway, keep that in mind, I pick a few ideas I want to work on this week. By the way, I also have another page called Content Calendar, just so I have a vague idea of when to publish each video and so I can plan ahead. I have videos planned for each week and sponsored videos are tagged with sponsored, so I don't forget. Alright, I just wanted to show you that briefly. Finally, it's time to plan your videos. After you picked ideas for videos, I usually turn them into a page. Then I apply my template that I made for planning a video. You can easily make a template by adding Rome slash templates to any block. 
Firstly, I always start by thinking about the main message of the video, which was inspired by essays of Paul Graham and how he organizes his essays around one core idea. So at the beginning, I want to spend some time to find that one core idea for each video. In order to do that, I often think about what kind of problems people have and how this video can provide a solution. You know, stuff like that. Secondly, think about potential titles and thumbnail, which actually might be the most important step of video planning, because the title and thumbnail have a huge influence on how your video performs. When it comes to thumbnail, I have to admit, I'm really bad at making them. So I started building a library of thumbnails from popular YouTubers, which I use as reference. Now, when this is done, I made a rough schedule until I published the video. Usually, I spend Monday and Tuesday for writing and planning, and Wednesday for filming and recording, Thursday and Friday for editing and publishing. Next, this keyword section is kind of for brainstorming. I just spend some time to think about relevant keywords and notes I have so I can include them in my video. Alright, we're almost there. Now it's time to make an outline or structure of the video and start writing a script. I don't always make a detailed outline and just start writing the first draft. Again from Paul Graham, one of his writing rules is to write about version 1 as fast as you can, rewrite it over and over. So I don't really care about the flow or grammar too much when I'm writing the first draft. This way you can write so much faster. Once you're done writing the first draft, you have to edit a few times, and then you can move on to filming. Alright, so that was my creative workflow using Roam Research. I hope you find this helpful if you want to use Roam Research for your creative work. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Feel free to send me a DM on Twitter or send me an email if you want to have a chat or ask me a question. Okay, thanks, bye!